welcome to our latest edition of Center Court. Jason Patterson alongside head men's basketball coach Eddie Payne as always. And coach, your team is off to a solid start to the conference season. And right now, your program possesses more wins than anybody else in the Atlantic Sun Conference overall. Well, that's good. I mean, that's good. We want to have more conference wins than anybody. So, uh, you know, you get in conference play one game at a time. You see it around the country. Uh, upsets in conference play. Duke loses. Uh, Oregon State beat Arizona. Wisconsin's lose to a, you know, an average Rutgers team. You know, so, you know, it, it's it's a different deal. And so, you know, we're playing fairly well. So we just want to try to grind it out one game at a time. Your opener in the conference turned out to be a very tight contest. A 13-0 a run in the first half, a big block by Mike, a big three by Mario, and a couple of big free throws by Ty Green at the very end. Sealed the win, a three-point victory for your team. Let's take a look back at the highlights from the conference opener. Blessing cut off as he penetrates. Miller will shoot it and score. That didn't happen very often to this upstate team, particularly here at home. Green will take a bite into that little stolen away. Now Brown at the other end. Has it blocked wow. away by Miller. Wow. 2 3 look as Green is cut off. Will turn. Very difficult shot is good. He nice pass inside. Cuthbertson losing the handle but staying with it at 16. And the ball is batted away. Green, oh my goodness, dives far sideline to steal it. Wow. And Miller gets the dunk. Picks up the steal. The senior from Germany will lay it up and in. How about it? Wow. What handiwork. Miller, rather Wilson looking to get it in. And the ball is stolen. Cuthbertson takes it away and lays it up. 66 win, a Sun player of the week. Blessing stepping into a three, and it's good. Blessing, who came alive. They leave Blessing wide open, and he nails it from left to the kick. So 68-65 the final as the Spartans take down Kennesaw State to open conference play. And, Coach, all three of your seniors end up in double figures, really lead the way for you in the opener. Well, it's pretty much been the way it has gone all year. Those three guys are really doing a great job uh, producing, leading, providing em emotional energy, um, competitive spirit, that kind of thing. And they're doing a terrific job, and they did it again in that game. But uh, our whole team's contributing to that. I thought that uh, we could have played a little smarter at times with this and that and the other, but we did. We played determined. Um, we played focused uh, and confident, too. I mean, we made, I don't know, the last 12 in a free throws in a row or something like that. And uh, they, they just had an air, our, our group, and even the guys that didn't play in the game, everybody had the right mindset to come out on, on top in a game like that. While turnovers were pretty much even in the basketball game, your team did a better job of cashing in on turnovers. Really made the difference in the game. We've been good at that. We've been good at taking the ball in transition and converting uh, open court opportunities into points. That's been something that I think we've been pretty good at all year, and uh, we, we try to encourage that, not just running off of turnovers, but running off of missed shots. We also talk a lot about your seniors and your guard play, but points in the paint made a big difference in the game on Saturday as well. You know, Mike and uh, Sean Quez both had double-digit rebounds. I think they had about eight points apiece. So they had, we had solid performances from the four and the five spot. And uh, hopefully that will continue because we need that uh, inside out balance. We need some balance there to, to really be a good, good team. The road challenge was next after that home win to open the conference play. Let's take a look back at the game against the Lipscomb Bisons on the road in Nashville.
So two conference games now in the books for the Upstate Spartans, and as we said, a solid start to the conference season. One of the reasons, several surrounding cast members to those seniors. Coach Payne and I talked about a few moments ago, one of those, Josh Cuthbertson, and it's time for you to get to know him a little better in our Get to Know Your Spartans segment. My name is Joshua Cuthbertson. I play small forward, shooting guard for uh, South Carolina Upstate men's basketball. Uh, my middle name is Mac Edward. Um, Everybody used to make fun of my middle name in high school, so I stopped trying, telling people like what it was for a little while, but I just took pride in it, which is like, I love my middle name. Uh, in the Georgia Tech game, uh, I hit four big threes in the first half. It was because my team started off a little sluggish and we had needed some energy. And me coming off the bench, that's like one of my main things is to bring energy to the team and excite the crowd. So me hitting those big threes was just like, exciting the crowd and giving my team some energy and push so we could spark back up and get back into the game. Uh, growing up, I was like all about myself. I could really tell you that I was a really selfless person, but really growing up, really stepping into life and coming to college just made me think a lot about my team and a lot about being more of a team player. So when Ty got hurt, I just felt like my team needed me. So I just had no questions about it. I just gave my red shirt year and just played. Uh, coming to Upstate just expanded my game more. I mean, in high school, yeah, I was like the main scorer, the main rebounder, but here, there's a lot of good players. We have Ty, you have Fred, you have Mario. So it just really expanded my game. So now I don't really have to score as much. I can just go chase rebounds, dive on loose balls, just be a hustle energy guy for the team. My favorite Upstate basketball memory would have to be Mississippi State. I would say Mississippi State when Ty Green knocked down like the biggest shot I've ever probably seen like in a long time. When he came off that ball string and pulled up from the elbow to win the game, like that was that was a great memory for us because that was a big game and that was going into Christmas break and we really just needed to go out with a win and we played a good game, a tough fall game, and that shot just sealed the deal. So I think that would be my favorite upstate basketball memory. Welcome back to Center Court. Now we highlight the women's basketball program with Coach Tammy George alongside. Coach, thanks for joining us as always. Glad to be here. Following the non-conference finale on the road at Furman, your team saw its long string of success here in this building come to a close in a tough and intense battle against a very good Kennesaw State team. Yeah, you know, they're very good. Uh, just uh, they came in, they, they uh, had a very, you know, a very solid team. Their record pretty much shows that. Uh, just felt like we didn't come in and play as well as I thought we should have. Again, we, we continue our offensive woes, shooting very bad, uh, even here at home. And that kind of caught up with us uh, here at home uh, against a good basketball team in Kennesaw. Uh, we've been shooting, uh, you know, in the 30s, and it just caught up with us, and uh, uh, we, we just failed to get the W. A bright spot across both those games was really the emergence of Kristen Dickerson. She came away with 13 points to lead your team at Furman, had 14 here to also pace the club against the Kennesaw State team. Yeah, you know, I think she's, she's obviously a new player for us uh, coming in from her, her junior college, and she's still learning our system and learning what we expect. So we expect it to take a, a few games for her to get, get it under her belt, but I do think she's coming along, and that's a good sign for us to see. As you get ready to look ahead and work your way into the depths of this conference season, what are the major things you've talked to your team about? Let's work on focusing on improving these particular areas. Well, I think I think there's two things. One, I think we got to get tougher. Um, again, we we got to get we got to play through the adversities of the basketball game, and I think there's times when uh, we miss free throws or we miss shots or we don't all the calls don't go our way. We we kind of hang our heads, and we got to fight through that. That's just that's part of the game, and we got to move on to the next play. I think that carries over and takes away some of our energy and our intensity that we need to have. So I, I think that's one thing. And then obviously, if we're not going to shoot very good, we got to we got to pick it up on the defensive end. And I think that toughness thing is 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 carrying ourselves through the adversities and having energy on the defensive end and trying to get some stops will help us too. You get a chance to go right back into the win column, or at least attempt to tonight in this building 
against a, another talented team in Lipscomb, and then you go on the road on Saturday against Northern Kentucky. Those are two teams that faced off in their conference opener with Northern Kentucky coming out on top in a very tight contest and size those two teams up for us as you get ready to play them. Well, I think, you know, again, we, we have a, we only have 14 games this year. So every game is important. Every game is, is very important. And, and, you know, conference is, everybody knows you, they know what to expect and you've played them, you play each other so much. They just, you got to come ready to play. And uh, both of them are very good basketball teams. They can put the ball in the basket. We just got to step up and, and bring the high intensity, high energy for 40 minutes. I don't, I don't think we've played a complete game. We can't play eight minutes in this half or 10 minutes in this half we got to put together some complete games to come away with some wins in this conference. Well, and one thing that your team was doing very well early on was making sure they distributed the ball around. You had a lot of scores in double figures. Dickerson, the only one in these two previous games, certainly a point of emphasis for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, we're just struggling on the offensive end. I think they're doing, teams are doing a good job of trying to take Brittany Starling away. And uh, she saw some double teams. And, and uh, we just, we just got to, you know, we got to be more, a little bit more patient on offense and, and, and make the open shots. How about playing at home after you suffer the kind of losses you did the last couple of games? It's nice to at least be in familiar surroundings. Yeah, you know, we, I, I, we're, we're pretty good here. We just got to come again. I think it just starts with our energy and our effort, and it's just we got to come out with that intensity, uh, you know, especially coming off a loss like that. I, I expect to see them ready to play and, and lots of energy and effort um, on the court. Only one conference game under the belt of the women's basketball team. Plenty left. You'll want to keep an eye on everything that happens with them at UpstateSpartans.com. And, Coach, thanks again for your time. All the best tonight and moving forward in the conference season. Thank you. We'll be back with more center court right after the break. People know you and they get to know you on a personal level and they know your abilities. And this is really a place where I have seen, and I mean this, this is a place where I've seen students come here and, and really try to figure out who it is that they are. Is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? And I think every college kid go through that. But being here at Upstate and being a part of so many different programs, I know what my purpose is. And I can say that with confidence. You don't get lost in the crowd at Upstate. Let's see Upstate is a place where people can discover themselves. Welcome back to Center Court as we get ready to go inside the game with head coach Eddie Payne. Coach, there was a play on this floor over the weekend that folks are still talking about. It involved both Ty Green and Fred Miller. Had a defensive aspect to it and it finished with an outstanding dunk. You just don't see plays like that very frequently. I mean, that's a rare play. Uh, Fred had a deflection. Ty was rotating pretty much sideline to sideline to cover uh, his responsibility in our matchup and then he he was he, he got on his horse and took off after that deflection and changed directions and basically paralleled dove out of bounds tipped it back in Fred got it and dunked it I mean just a terrific terrific play um, and like I say I mean that, that's unusual you just don't see guys make plays like that and um, that was a terrific energy boost for our team and at a key moment in the game you said there was a certain play from Spartan history it reminded you of that fans may remember. Yeah, I don't know if they remember years ago when Bobby Davis was here, he made a similar play underneath our own basket where he dove and threw it back in and there was a scrum. He got up off the deck, got back into the play, picked it up, scored, and got fouled. Let's talk about the health of your team. The Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine Injury Report is on the board next. How's everybody looking as you get ready to head a little deeper into conference play? Fred. Uh, tweaked his bad ankle again, so he's a little sore. Uh, I think he'll be okay. But uh, and then uh, Michael separated his shoulder, I think, for the fourth time this year, so he's sore. But the more times he does it, the less sore he is. So uh, we're just hoping we can get through the season with him, and then you know try to get it fixed in the off season. But so right now, you know, a little banged up, but we're there'll be a, they're st they're still competing. Well, fans, you'll often hear it said that the highest form of flattery is imitation. That's what you're going to see many of the students do right now as they give you their take on their favorite Spartan with Alex Love traveling around campus to capture these moments. We're here in the dining hall on USC Upstate, and I'm Alex Love for Center Court here with my teammate and good friend Kiki. Kiki, how you doing today? I'm doing fine, and you? I'm doing well, thank you. So out of all the men basketball players, who would you say is your favorite player on the team? Um, I would say my favorite player is Josh. Josh, do you have a little favorite impression he, he that he does on the games when he scores a basket? He goes something like, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> banging on the chest after he makes the basket. 
I'm Alex Love reporting for Center Court, and I'm here with my new friend Brandon, who just recently started in the upstate play to kill a mockingbird. Brandon, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good, thank you. So, of everybody on the upstate basketball team, who would you say is your favorite player? Uh, personally, I'd have to go with Ty Green. I'd say Ty Green. Ty Green. Ty Green. You think you could do a little impression of him after he scores on the court? Sure. Yeah, let's see it. I'm Alex Love reporting for Center Court here with my new friend Rachel Reed, who is the sister of my cameraman Josh Reed. Rachel, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So, of all the people on the Upstate basketball team, who would you say is your favorite player? Kareem. Kareem. You think you could do a little imitation of him on the court? Sure. Why Let's not? see it. All right. Uh, Mario Blessing. Mario Blessing. Ah, Mario Blessing. You yeah. think you could do a little impression of him after he scores on the court? I can't. It's this one move that he does. It's like this right here. It's like. Was that a good one? That was very good. Thank very you. good. It, uh, credit to the theater. Thank you. I'm Alex Love reporting for Center Court. All right, Coach, time for us to look ahead at your next contest. And up next is the Northern Kentucky Norse, one of the newer teams in the Atlantic Sun Conference. They are competing for a championship in A-Sun play this year. And they've been shooting pretty well. Second in the conference in shooting should be a challenge for your team. Yeah, they like they, they have a spread type of approach on offense. Uh, they shoot a lot of threes. Uh, obviously, when they're making them, they're very dangerous and good. Uh, you know, they've had some really good moments this year. So, uh, you know, anybody that spreads the floor and shoots threes when they're making shots, you, you know, they're very, very dangerous, and, and that would describe Northern Kentucky. Their guard play has been a real key to their offense. White, everybody remembers from the last couple of years in the Atlantic Sun Conference. But they've added a freshman in person who leads them in most offensive categories. Those two guys seem to be the real key that makes their offense go. Yeah, yeah, that, and again, you know, because they do space it so well, it's going to really be a test for our matchup to 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 extend our defense to guard the arc and. Uh, you know, we're seeing, you see a fair amount of that in this league because a lot of the teams tend to be more perimeter oriented. And so we have to uh, do a good job of running them off the arc. Now in conference play, what are the points of emphasis maybe that you've been working on with your team over the last week or so? Well, we just identify, <clears throat> you know, five or six things that we got to get better at, whether it's deflections, uh, f free throws, um, you know, more consistent on our box outs, fundamental things, uh, not not anything strategic, so to speak, but just doing the little things a little bit better. One or two better possessions in four or five categories, and you know, that's enough to win a game. So, uh, you know, we're trying to co concentrate and go back to, uh, and emphasize fundamental situations. It's going to be a very special day in the Hodge Center on Saturday when Northern Kentucky comes in. It's Hall of Fame Day, and for you, it has a unique wrinkle this year. Your son, Luke Payne, going into the Hall of Fame. You had the privilege of coaching him here. Now you have the privilege of having your son coach with you here, and you'll be inducting him. You'll be introducing him for that induction on Saturday. What does that mean to you? And talk about a father, from a father's standpoint, what it's been like to have him as both a player and now as a coach. Well, <clears throat> It's going to give me the opportunity to do something I don't normally do, and that's going to be brag on him uh, in a public forum. I didn't, I didn't, I stayed away from that when he was a player, uh, you know, and and as well as a coach. So you know, now this is a great honor for him. He's well deserved, and so I get a chance to, uh, like I say, to brag about him. And um, as far as coaching him and 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 having him work with us. Uh, it's been a great experience. He's uh, he's very competent at what he does. He, he's meticulous in, in it, and uh, he's reliable. Uh, all qualities you want in a, a good assistant coach. And plus, he he knows our system. He knows the school. He knows how to sell all that. Uh, he has relationships with players, dating back to when he was playing in Australia, and he used to come play with them all the time. So, so it's been a good. Uh, 
uh, fit for him, for me, and our program. It's been a, a good benefit for our program. He's meshed really well with Coach Perry and Coach Hart, and you know we're 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 glad to have him, and uh, we're going to celebrate on Saturday when he's inducted. Well, congratulations to you and your family from all of us surrounding the program. Thank you. And you'll have an opportunity to come out and see not only the younger Coach Payne be inducted into the Upstate Hall of Fame, but a number of athletes who made their mark during their time on campus. That's a part of the game against Northern Kentucky here at the Hodge Center on Saturday. Don't miss it. If you haven't made plans to come out, do so now. Coach, thanks as always for your time. We look forward to visiting with you next week. Okay, Jason. And now we come to that point in the show where your votes determine which of our plays remains from week to week as the top play here on center court. You'll have Ty Green's dunk that survived from a week ago and this new play, which also involved Ty Green and had Fred Miller finishing with the dunk on the other end. Just an outstanding performance in the conference opener. You can tweet to at Upstate Spartans with the hashtag CC top play. Indicate whether it's Ty's dunk or Fred's dunk and we'll let you know the same time next week, which survives as our top play. So that's a wrap for this edition of Center Court. We look forward to having you join us next Wednesday night on Upstate Basketball Insider as we go a little deeper into the conference slate for both the men's and women's teams. Have a great week, everybody.